Welcome to another episode of Ben and John Do Cars. Today we are looking at the E90 BMW M3. Let's do it. <laughs> Woo! So, E90 M3, first impressions. Bloody lovely. It is bloody lovely. It feels quite bulky, but in a good way. It feels solid. Whoa, Jesus Christ, and it's pretty quick. This is the only V8 they ever made. Yeah, so, so a bit of a rare treat. Four cylinder, six cylinder, six cylinder, V8. Now they're back to six, six cylinder. Six cylinder, turbo the turbos. Charged. Yeah, so this is the NASP V8 running 414-ish. That's what it came from the factory, apparently. Yeah, yeah 414. So first impressions are great. Yeah. I mean, the exterior of the car, it looks absolutely lovely. Now, I must, we, we spoke before we did the shoot, we both agreed that this sedan model yeah. definitely looks better than the coupe. I think so. I, I mean, the, the coupe is lovely. Awesome car, but I think the, the saloon, the coupe is quite feminine. It's quite a feminine shape, which is lovely, but you know, the M3, especially with the V8, it's a bit of a muscle car, really. So like yeah. the saloon, I think it's a bit chunkier, a bit bulkier, just looks a bit more aggressive, a bit meaner. Yeah, and which is, which is rare to say about a four door, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think it's something to do maybe with the rear doors, where they come into the arches, it really gives those rear wheels, sticks them out a bit. Now, this car does have spaces on the back and some spaces on the front, um, which gives it that meaner look. But even from stock, it still looks pretty menacing. It's a cool looking car. And yeah, like we've just jumped into it and we're sort of pootling around at the moment at low speed and it feels like I'm comfy. This yeah. is the e this has got the EDC, the, the optional electronic damping control, which Ross says apparently makes a real big difference. Uh, Ross, the owner, says make a real big difference because you know you can take it to the track, you can firm it up, you yeah. can thrash it around a little bit, and then you can come home, stick it into soft mode, and it soaks up the bumps, which is which I I quite like. Yeah, I love the fact that you don't have to go and spend two, three grand on some top-end coilovers for something like this and have to adjust them while you're on the track and adjust them when you're coming home. They've already thought about that. Great little bit of tech, that. That is, yeah, like, it makes a big difference. Again, if you're just using it as a daily driver to sort of put around and have a bit of fun on the dual carriageway and the B roads, then the standard shocks and springs are probably fine, but Ross, obviously, he's going to be tracking it a lot and it just makes sense, I think, to try and get one with the, with the EDC. He's put uprated springs on here. Yeah, so it's slightly lower than standard. So, right, now we're on a slightly twisty road. Let's oh. see what she can do. Oh my God. The gear ratios, they're perfectly spaced for this kind of back road blasting. And that V8, whoa, It baby. sinks, doesn't it? really does. You get it up above about 5,000 RPM and it just sings along. Beautiful. It's got a good amount of power as well, hasn't it? Do it. Oh, once it gets into that power band, oh, it loves it. 7,000, oh. oh my God, almost 8,000 RPM. Once it, gets, a... once it gets up there, it pulls. I mean, yeah. The, Still got a fucking indicator the, on. The power band, no, there is a noticeable power band. Yeah. I think once you get, well, I wasn't looking at the rev meter, but you can notice the almost like the valves opening up more yeah. once it gets high up in the revs. It's very sure footed. Oh yes. Sticks to the road. It's so it's so sure footed. Again, people think that M3s are all drift monsters, but you put some decent tires on them and you don't act like a fucking lunatic. You ready? So 4,000 RPM in a second we'll go around this corner and we'll see, we'll see what this bad boy can do. So third gear, 4,000 RPM. I'm not gonna tell you how fast you are, uh, how fast we're going, but foot down. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. High up in the rev range, it sounds like you don't hear that anywhere else, that kind of high revving V8. I mean, you get them in Ferraris, but they're slightly different with their flat plane cranks and everything. It sounds like a NASCAR. It sounds like an old school race car. That sort of Left. almost like a shriek. Yeah. Third gear. See, like that's the thing. You can be sensible with it. Coming out of sharp turns and stuff, you leave it. Leave it in third, and you don't need to worry about the rear braking loose because 
because it's so high revving, there's not that much torque. You can just mash your foot down at 2,000 RPM. Yeah. And by, by the time it sort of picks up its feet and you're, you're really going along, you're around the corner in a straight line, everything's good. And the power's down. We're going left? No, right. Oh, it's, it's just it's fucking large. Sounds amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo this road is very, very, very windy. Very, and very, very undulating. We should make a remix of that. Very, 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 <laughs> very windy. Very, 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 very undulating. Very windy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it! Yes! Oh, yes. Yeah, I want to, like, I've not driven a V8 M3 before. This is the first time. Likewise. And um, i got to admit, the one thing that's, I mean, in terms of its chassis dynamics and stuff like that, it feels very similar to, I mean, most M3s, you know, we've driven the E36, driven a couple of those. Perfectly we've, weighted, perfectly yeah, balanced. exactly. Front to back balance is nice. You, you know, you can tell it's not a light car, but it's a sure footed car that you can kind of place on the road quite nicely. But the one thing that's standing out for me at the moment is the noise this thing makes. Yeah, it's lovely. And this is on a standard exhaust. Standard exhaust, standard intake as well. <laughs> Yes. Again, you get it above 6,000 RPM and it sounds like an old racing car. It sounds like <laughs> an old sort of, yeah, one of those old Chevys, like Can-Am Chevys and stuff. It's awesome. What an awesome car. And yeah, the steering wheel's really chunky in my hand. It's perfectly placed. I like that. Driving position's nice. The gearbox, very nice. Short throw, not too short. Oh. Pedals are perfectly placed for heel and towing. Oh, oh, baby! Lovely, isn't it? Really quick revving as well. I mean, they must have a pretty light flywheel. I don't know what the deal with that is, but literally, like, oh. Yeah, throttle response is right there, isn't it? Really? That's the nice thing. We're sat here. Okay, we're going through a village at 30 mile an hour, 25 mile an hour. Very, very civilized. Following an extremely orange Audi Q3 or something. It's quiet. I and mean, we've still got a bit of a bit of a warble if you put your foot down, but it's nice and quiet. Yeah. It's very comfortable. Very, very comfortable. And it's got a nice blend of like... Yeah, I know what you mean. It's a blend of kind of, you're enclosed, it feels safe, it feels well built, but also it allows you to hear the engine, hear the throttle notes, to know that you've still got a bit of a powerful lump up front. You get up it and it sounds like an old racing car. Yeah. So it's a mixture of limo, car. hot hatch, old racing car. And rear wheel drive monster. Yeah. Oh yeah, that throttle, wow. Now down these roads, we can't really open it up to its full potential, and I do. I have noticed that when we're driving quite spirited like this, once you get over 6,000 RPM, it really, really comes alive. Yeah. Heel and toe it down a gear. Round the bend, ease it in. Oh, oh God, yes! Pulls you out of the bend, lovely stuff. To quote Richard Hammond, it makes me feel, I am a driving god! <laughs> Whoa! There is something about having a V8, no matter what the car is, unless it's a really shitty old Range Rover with like 150 horsepower, but a nice, powerful V8 in a well-matched chassis, there's not an awful lot like it. It makes you feel powerful. It does, doesn't it? it? Makes me feel like a man! Yes. I'm a man! Man! Yes. Feel the guns! Yeah! Mate, this car's got more guns than we'll ever have. I'm driving an M3 V8. Yeah, bitches. Look at that. Wow, <laughs> wow, you've been working out, bro. No. It seems to have got bigger ever since you stepped into this piece. <laughs> yeah. It's testosterone fuel, isn't All it? All natural steroids, that's what this car is. Like, I miss I miss my United Estate 320D, yeah. yeah. As much as this is a much more powerful and prestigious car to that, Whoa. this is giving me, like, BMW vibes. Yeah. You know what I mean? They translate that BMW DNA so well through their whole range. You'll remember, if you're a Ben and John to do cars aficionado, <laughs> which I'm sure all of you are, you'll remember that when we drove the uh, E36 M3 uh, a couple of years ago, I hadn't driven a BMW in a while. I'd never driven an M3 by that point, and it, that was probably eight or nine years after I sold my old E46 coupe. Yeah. And even though it was an M3, and it was an E46, so a different model, yeah. got in that, poof. Yeah, okay, this is a 3 Series BMW. Absolutely. And it's the same with this. The difference is, this feels, compared to your E90 320D, yeah. this feels... Whoa. Don't know what that fuel. was. Feel, feel, we need fuel. Yeah, this feels, everything, all the controls feel a bit heavier than your yeah. 320D, do you know what I mean? 100%, everything feels bigger. I mean, the steering wheel, I think, is the same size, but I think that 
bonnet bulge immediately is the first thing you see when you're sat here. That gives you a chunky, powerful feel. And then it's translated from the bonnet back into the driver's seat. So you've got chunky steering wheel, you've got chunky bulge on the dash here. The gear knob is quite chunky in your hand and you feel secure. So that translates from the exterior into the interior really, really well. Chunky. Chunky. It's a chunky car. I mean, you've got eight cylinders. It's a chunky engine. Yeah, we should get a chunky counter on that when you do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the steering's yes. very, very precise. Oh, my word. Oh, the steering is so precise. But for a big weighty car, what's this, 1.6 ton? Yeah, 1,500 1,500 ton? 1,500 ton? Well, 1,500 oh. kilos. It, the steering is really precise. You point it and it goes. The steering is quite weighted, which I like. I like that as well. Um, I'm, I know in the, um, whoa, I know in the, hey. the newer UDC. F80 uh, M3, you can change the resistance on the steering wheel. I think you might be able to in this as well, but we're not going to try and do that because it's got oh. no Lovely. Oh, mate, this is. But what, what, what was I getting at? <laughs> oh yeah, the steering. <laughs> so the steering, it's got a bit of weight to it. It's a bit of resistance there. Chunky. It's chunky. It's but there is very very limited input that is required to point it where you want it to go. Like there's not you're not trying to fight with the wheel. You, look at that. Turn it. It goes. It reminds me of my track car. Which yeah. is cambered in. I know this has got front camber plates, so it is cambered in ever so slightly, which probably does have something to do with that really direct feel of the wheel. But I wouldn't think it was much different from standard in terms of the, the way the steering wheel felt, just because of the camber plates, but who knows? All I know is it feels fantastic! Oh, yeah. yeah, the uh, it's just. Oh, it's lush. Again, we said it in most of the M3 videos that we do, like. It's not the fastest car in a straight line. It's probably not the most nimble car around the corners. It's not the most luxurious car, but it does all of those things to a very good standard. It really it's, does. It's all the car you could ever want. Okay, maybe it's a bit thirsty. Yeah. But other than that, it's all the car you could ever need. It really is, isn't it? Which is exactly why Ross bought it. You know, he's recently started a family. Congratulations, Ross and Peggy. And, um, you know, he needed a bit more of a sensible sort of family car that you can stick, you know, the kids in the back and everything else. And uh, you know, M3, that's it. Especially yeah. with the EDC, you can do your shopping on a Sunday, put it around town, no problem on service, stick the kids in the bag, everybody's happy, drive to the racetrack. Set 115s round Coombe, yeah. happily, happily do that all day long. And Pick then your that's kids it. up from nursery, whatever, drive home. Job yeah. done. You know what I mean? What's that? Oh. oh, that's oh. it. Yes! That is it, mate. That is the one, isn't it? Oh! Good to hear your toe there, bro. Thanks, man. But hey! Hey, our old school. Oh, it's your school, mate. Respect. Oh my God. Hey, they've built another section of it. Jesus. Like it. Oh, I love this. I love it, I love it, I love it. So, I mean, we've driven the new F80 M3s, haven't we, Ben? Yeah. And that's a straight six twin turbo charge. Yeah. Way, way talkier than this. 450 horsepower. It's got another 50 odd horsepower than this. Way, way talkier low down, certainly. But. It's a different experience. Yeah, it really like, is. I would imagine this is probably more rewarding on track. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially with the manual box. You have yeah. to really work it. I know the flappy paddles are really good. Trust me for downshifting. It's really, really sharp and responsive. But you lose that kind of trying to work the car, trying to be at one with the car. Do you know what I mean? This is a nice balance. And to be fair, people say this a lot, but this is a nice balance of, you know, you've got a pretty high tech high revving V8 engine, Yeah. you got all the toys, Yeah. you got iDrive, blah, 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 blah electric yeah. seats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But it still feels like an analog car. It's an analog driving experience. Whereas yeah. when we drove the, M3, the new M3 and the M4, they both felt, don't get me wrong, phenomenal cars. I mean, I'd have one in a heartbeat. Yes, Ridiculously yeah. fast. Yeah, uh, astonishingly fast. But it felt, it didn't feel like an analog experience. It felt like there were computers doing the work for you. Yeah. Which has its place. I'm not, I'm not criticizing. It's just different experiences. Absolutely. Different experiences. It's just different, different experiences. Different experiences. Yeah, you're right. I mean, this feels, you, you've, it's hard to explain it. This, feel, this feels more race car -y. You know what I mean? The other yeah. ones feel more precise, certainly, and faster, definitely, but not as involved. Yeah. They haven't lost that. They definitely haven't lost that. I think they've done an amazing job with the F80. It's one of my favorite cars, probably, one of the best cars that we've driven of the new 
newer type cars we've driven. I mean, there's not much that really competes with that. No, but when not. you come back a few years, what's this? 2009. This, so this, this is no nine. Yeah. So we're looking ten years. Mate, there was not much about that would compete with this ten years ago. No. You know what I mean? I mean, Audi tried to do it with their RS4s with the V8s. Yeah, yeah. similar amount of power, but the driving experience in this just comes through the design language of the engine, the way it's set up. Talks race car. Mate, that was profound. It does though, doesn't it? It does, yeah, but I'm, I'm staggered. That was like, did you just read out of a Top Gear magazine? <laughs> I got one sneakily down there. <laughs> no, you're right though, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's a good car. The M3 is a good car. In case anyone was wondering, the M3 is a nice car. Let's rate everything out of five. Okay, cool. Okay, so. No, no everything out of eight, because it's a V8. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so interior, you went for 6.5 out of eight. Yeah. Exterior, you're going eight, I'm going seven. Yeah, do you want me to justify why I'm going eight? I'm no, let's just, let's just split the difference and say 7.5 again. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, noise. Oh, I'll, I'll go eight. A, that's a solid eight. I'll go eight with that. I mean, all, each single cylinder is producing me one point there. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And when you when you pull away, uh, it's sort of fairly fairly open throttle, but in a you know low revs, yeah. lovely warble, not too intrusive. Yeah. And then when you get it above sort of five six thousand rpm, it absolutely screams like nothing else I've driven. So yeah, I'll, I'll give the noise an eight. Yeah, handling. Uh, we haven't really been able to experience it, but no. from what I can feel around these roads, it's it's good. I can't really rate it out of eight because I can't I can't really test it, but it, I can imagine it would be quite high up there. I mean, it feels very like I said before. It feels very sure footed. It's quite weighty though. Yeah. So I mean, it'd be yeah, that's, to see. that's the other thing. Don't you know? This will be more than capable on track. I'm sure. You know, Ross is a good judge of that stuff, and he seems very confident about that. So I'll take his word for it. Um, but. I mean, don't get me wrong, you, this is not going to be the same around a track as like a stripped out E36 or anything. No, completely different. It is heavier, you know, it's, it's, it's a heavier car, you can tell it's a heavier car. It hides its mass pretty well, and it uses its mass pretty well. Like we said before, the balance, the balance is very is nice. Good, yeah. But, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take a bit of a guesstimate with the handling, Yeah. because I think we've got a pretty good feel for it. I'll say uh, <laughs> 7 out of 8. Yeah, okay, uh, I'll go with you. Seven out of eight. Seven out of eight. And with, then, some, with some good suspension and some really, really sticky tyres, this would this be setting some good lap times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, what else are we talking about? We've done the interior. We've have done we done the sound system? Oh no, we need to do a consumer test. We're on Radio 2 already, so let's just fucking crank it up. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, nice sound system. Right. Right, should we open her up down this jewelry just one last time yeah, before we give go it away? Yes, yeah, so there's nothing in the way. Don't drift into the curb. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, there is a Vauxhall Insignia or whatever it is in might the way. Be, might, it's an IT plane, might be a police car. Thank you. We'll sit in behind him, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Indicator still on kick, kick, kick. Okay, so let's go back to our rating system. So we've done the interior, we've done the noise, we've done the styling, we've done the handling, the power. High up in the rev range, I'm giving it a solid eight, mate. I'll, so, gi I'll give it a seven. Are it's, you mad? It's not shit your pants fast. But it's no, it's fucking quick, then. It is very, very. I mean, it's 440 horsepower. This is not a slow car. It's a very fast car. I'm going to give the feeling that this car gives to me that it translates into my body, into my mind. But Emotion. I'm Emotional response. The Let's emotional response score. Eight. It's an eight. It's a solid eight. It's a solid eight. Okay. Right, I've not been keeping track, so maybe during the edit you can tot up the scores. Okay. And so this is what it got out of the total number that we gave it. Yeah. <laughs> On the screen now. <laughs> out of... <laughs> out of something. Okay, so to summarise, we don't need to draw this out. It's a brilliant car. Absolutely. It's a V8. It's an M3. It's 400 plus horsepower. It's awesome. Manual. I love it. It sounds great. It drives brilliant. It's practical and also track worthy. Done. What else do you want? Right. So we've been out of the game a little bit lately. Yes. Um, but we're we're going to try and we're getting back into it. We're going to try and book some more shoots in soon. If you've got an interesting car you want us to have a go in, I'm sure we'd be interested too. So give us a message. We've recently reached a thousand subscribers. Yay. Not exactly, you know, changing the world or anything yet, but we oh, really appreciate your support. Nonetheless. So let's, uh, yeah, see you on the next one. Subscribe, please.
again? Go again. <coughs> okay. You go first, I'll go first. You go first. Okay. Car going fast. This is in 4K because I've fucked up the formatting on 1080. I can't record on 1080. It's just eating up my data. Right, okay. Right. Oh, wait a second. Ah, oh, you poo. Right, Hello. oh fuck yeah, mate. Come on, hurry up. We're going to stay, going Come fast. on. Oh, horrible bot. Right, quick, pull that truck. Go, right. Ben. Welcome to another episode of Ben and John do cars. Today, what are we looking at, Johnny? We're looking at the BMW E90 M3. Let's do it. Yes. Yes. Right, okay, we're going to have to do that again. 